this M2 iPad Pro video is not sponsored by anybody. Where do I start? The thumbnail? Okay, I would normally apologize, but in this case, I literally don't care. And no, this is not just gonna be a rant. I will share something today to help you navigate the M2 iPad Pro and some options to consider, because I do understand and respect that you may actually need a new iPad Pro and maybe you've been waiting for this release. I totally get that because your current iPad may be sold and you do an upgrade. So stick around for that. But first, I need to get something off my chest. This is the video I was not looking forward to making. Apple managed to kill the iPad Pro for me last year when they launched the M1 iPad Pro. And now with the M2 iPad Pro announced yesterday, I don't even need to buy the M2 iPad Pro to know that this will be an absolute waste of money. For most people anyway. For the six or seven people out there who use a specialist iPad OS app, this will be a good upgrade. Like artists, you know, if you do 3D modeling, maybe architects, I'm sure this will be fine as an upgrade. But for the rest of us, nah. Honestly, you have options, and I will go through those options a bit later in the video. Just bear with me because this is a major cock up from Apple. You may not like what I'm about to say here, but it's my honest opinion because let's face it, those big YouTubers out there they're not gonna tell you any of this. And here's another very important point on how this whole thing works, right? For those big channels, Apple sends them products ahead of time in exchange of a video, right? They give you a nice review, Apple sends them products, this hamster wheel keeps going. So those are not really sponsored reviews in the true sense of the word, but if they're receiving something before everybody else, those channels will have a really hard time in being honest and being criticizing of Apple. I'm not in that situation, but I'd find it really difficult to share exactly what I think if that was the case for me, if Apple were sending me stuff ahead of everybody else. The good news for you though, is that I literally don't care. Apple will never send me free stuff and I'd rather grow this channel without any strings attached. I care about you. Please do me a favor when you watch those videos in a few days, take a massive pinch of salt in what you're hearing. And here's the truth. The M1 iPad Pro was already overkill in comparison with the previous 2020 and even the 2018 models. Nothing wrong with the hardware here. I mean, there's an amazing, arguably from a specs perspective, the best in the market. I know, I know, I'm joking. I wasn't really serious, okay? Just, just get back to your box. Apple did what they do best, right? Through incredible marketing and very misleading techniques last year, which made you believe, or made me believe anyway, that the iPad Pro last year was finally gonna become my next computer. But honestly, I'm over that, right? That boat has sailed and I learned to sort of accept it. If I really want a tablet to do productive work on, I have my Galaxy Tab SA Ultra here. This thing does let me truly use it as a computer. I did so many videos moaning about the iPad Pro that I kind of got bored of it and I'm sure you did as well. But if you weren't really paying attention to the M1 iPad Pro last year, let me give you a short recap. In typical Apple fashion, they showed us video editing, they showed people using the PlayStation 5 controllers with haptic, they added the M1 chip to the iPad Pro with various storage and memory configurations that could only mean one thing, right? That they were gonna give us some sort of a bump in the software or maybe even pro apps, right? And like a bloody idiot, I fell for it. My bad, it's on me. Apple weren't forcing me to buy it. I just believed their marketing, the hype, and I bought it. As an example, this M1 iPad Pro here, which nearly cost me $2,000 at launch, has one terabyte SSD and 16 gig of RAM. Yeah, I fell for that. Sure, we can use LumaFusion to edit videos, we can use Procreate in the most beautiful ways, but that's not really a pro sort of usage, is it? I mean, it's like, that's not what professionals use. It's very basic, and this is nothing new. On the 2018 iPad Pro, you could do this, right? So not to mention that very few apps could take advantage of all that extra memory that I paid for. Connecting to an external monitor? Well, it took them over a year to enable this, and it still sucks. When I did a video about this, people shot me down and said, oh, no, you're you kind of you're too early. I wasn't, it still sucks. iPadOS has got loads of updates already and still rubbish. Stage Manager is just another gimmick that to me feels like Apple are trying really, really hard to be different instead of just giving us something that works. I really think it's a joke and it doesn't stop on the iPad Pro either. These tactics are being applied to the iPhone 14, the Apple Watch, the MacBooks, and look, I'm aware that I'm sounding like I'm just moaning about everything here, but I buy a lot of Apple products, not just for these review videos, but personally as well for my family. And I have always been an Apple customer. So I feel like I can be totally transparent with you on this one and just speak from the heart, right? As I said, there's no strings attached on this channel. And I can guarantee there's a lot of people out there that want to say what I'm saying right now, but I scared of losing their views and using early access to Apple products. Did I not clearly explain the circle of trust to you? To me, some of my sentiment comes down to trust. The same way Apple gained my trust after so many years of being a customer, they quickly lost it on the iPad Pro with those tactics of clearly just making more money, squeezing more money out of me. I felt cheated by the M1 iPad Pro because you know they sold 
a 16 gig RAM that couldn't be used, still can't be used today. And I just feel like it was nothing but misleading marketing. I don't feel cheated now because you know what? For the first time in many years, I didn't buy any of the iPads yesterday. If I do end up buying one of these iPads, it will be simply to make a very standard video about it and I'll immediately return it. I'm just being honest with you. I have no intention of buying any of these iPads for personal use. And if I do buy it, it will be purely to compare with another iPad maybe to do my job here as a tech reviewer. Now, here's where I can help you. As I said at the beginning of the video, you may be due an upgrade and maybe you're waiting for this iPad release. It's not all doom and gloom as I may sound like it is right now. I have some good news for you. And before I forget, YouTube can be really hard for smaller channels like this. This is not a sponsored video. I'm doing this in my lunch hour here. So if you're enjoying this video, a thumbs up will go a long way in getting this video kind of recommended on YouTube. But you can do even better than that. Don't buy my merch, they're all rubbish anyway but share this video with someone you know. The benefit to you, and hopefully a friend, is that I'll be here at least once a week with a down-to-earth tech video for you. Right, options. And I'm only gonna talk about the iPad Pro here. I'll talk about the iPad 10 in a separate video because that's another bombshell. You may still need an iPad because yours is getting on a bit and you need an upgrade, right? And if you're settled on an iPad, you want to stick with Apple because of the ecosystem, as I said, I really respect that and I understand that myself because I am in that ecosystem and I know how painful it is to, to leave or to try something different. But I strongly recommend these two options. My favorite iPad right now is the M1 iPad Air 5. This thing is the best value for money right now. Very light, extremely capable, and it doesn't try to be your next computer. It's an awesome tablet. It's got Touch ID. It does everything perfectly. I reviewed the M1 iPad Air 5 here and you can find really loads of accessories for it as well. I'll leave all the links at the end of the video for you. The second option is for those of you who actually care about that extra performance juice and you want a nicer display as well, but you don't feel like buying the M2 iPad Pro because, because of all that cash, frankly. The M1 iPad Pro here is cheaper now, right? And if you're lucky enough to, to find a second hand in good condition, then go for it. Remember, it's just over a year old. My iPad Pro has been collecting dust since I got the Tab SA Ultra, especially for working during the day, and even more so since I got the M1 iPad Air. I had plans for the iPad Pro, that's why I bought it. I love the keyboard. Actually, before this, I had a 2017 iPad Pro. So I got this because I had plans for it. I wanted to use it for work, create content on it, but it's been a flop, right? The hardware is there for it. Nothing wrong with this hardware. It's a beautiful piece of equipment, but Apple are purposely not giving us the software to go with it. And I've had enough of it, to be honest. <laughs> but between the M2 iPad Pro and the M1 iPad Pro, go with the M1. That's my recommendation because you're really not gonna miss out on anything. There's not a lot of difference unless you're in one of those edge cases I mentioned earlier. And the third option is for you who's brave enough and you also had enough of Apple, the Tab SA Ultra. This is a real tablet. Is it perfect? No. I'm not gonna sit here and say, oh my gosh, you know, this is the best thing since sliced bread. But it doesn't pretend to be either, right? It's, it does its job very simply. Yes, Android apps have come a long way for this tablet, but they're still not there, right? In terms of comparison between iOS app, iPadOS app, and Android apps. I did loads of reviews on this. If you're prepared to give Android a go, this is top notch, pun intended. You can truly multitask on this tablet. Samsung DeX with an external monitor attached to it really brings this to life. The S Pen is included as well, not another hundred and whatever dollars on top of it. The display is amazing. It's not as bright as the iPad Pro. I never use this outside anyway. It's much bigger than the iPad Pro and it's awesome for gaming. Decent accessories for it are difficult to find, so that's another kind of negative on that one, but they are out there. If you look hard enough, you'll find them. Sorry for the rushed aspect of this video. I'll see you soon.